Hey Zanish, we're going to build a Python scanner similar to Sheet Engine. From the UI, we'll be able to select a process from the process list and attach to it. After that, we can select 4 bytes option for the value type and scan for a specific value such as 150. When the first scan button is clicked, it will look for the value in the target process and display the results in the table. Clicking the arrow icon will insert the selected address into the list at the bottom. This scanner will be undetectable because it's written in Python and uses custom build code. We will use the PYQD module to create a user interface similar to Sheet Engine. We can also search for strings and array of bytes. We can also use the next scan button to narrow down the result. Let's look at the Python source code for the scanner. Modules such as psutil, ctypes and pyqt are imported. The code heavily relies on pyqt for rendering the UI. If we scroll all the way down, we can see the total lines of code is 1300, which is tiny in comparison to Sheet Engine or Reclass. Since Python is quite slow when it comes to memory scanning, the actual scanning part is implemented in C++, as it's not easy to optimize Python code. We can take a look at the C++ header, where we will find several scan types such as exact value, value between, and more. The function must be exported by writing extern C to avoid any issues when accessing them. The header also includes specialized scan functions that have been exported, allowing us to access them from Python. The total size of the C++ code is around 400 lines, which is relatively small for a scanner that functions similarly to Sheet Engine. The scan function, scan chunk numeric x, reads chunks of memory from the target process during a scan by calling read process memory, and then searches for the data within each chunk. This approach makes the scanning process extremely fast. There are similar functions in the same code to search for strings and array of bytes. And these export functions are called from Python. This C++ code is compiled into a DLL file. We'll go back to the Python code. The class CPP scan comparison type is an enum, which we will provide to the C++ code so the DLL can perform the type of scan we need. We have to load the C++ DLL, which is scanner code or DLL. When the DLL path is found, the DLL is loaded using ctypes.dll. The functions open target process, close target process, and free found addresses are exported functions of the DLL. We create types for them in Python so we can call them using ctypes in Python. A map is created for the value types and we get the appropriate functions for them from the DLL. We also create function types for string functions and AOB scan. Before we can see how the UI was created, let's analyze scanther class. One of the key features of the scanther class is it doesn't block the main window UI when the DLL is scanning the memory of a process. That's because we're using QThread type from PYQT for multithreading. In the init function of scanThread, the member max results to collect is the number of results to scan in a single batch to avoid freezing the UI. There could be thousands of results or more, so we can scan for values in batches, and the timeout is set to 30 seconds, and the class allows cancelling the scan. The run function is the main entry point when the thread starts. It starts the scan by calling either perform first scan logic for new scans or perform next scan logic if refining previous scans. It also includes overall error handling and emits the scan finish signal when done. The check timeout function is called throughout the scan. It checks if the elapsed time since start time has exceeded the time duration. If a timeout occurs, it emits an error signal and sets flag to stop the scan. Perform full scan logic is called when scanning for the initial scan. It opens a handle to the target process and it checks if the C++ DLL is loaded. It also supports scanning memory in Python, but that is the last resort and is only used if the DLL cannot be loaded. It checks for scannable memory regions using virtual query X and then iterates through these regions in chunks. Depending on the value type selected, it will either perform a string scan such as ASCII or Unicode scan. And if array of bytes is selected, then it performs AOB scan. There are more functions for other value types such as integers and floats, which are called if selected. For string and AOB scans, if the DLL scan is successful, it will read the values for scan addresses. If the scan fails for whatever reason, it will print the error, including the address where it failed to read the data. This is the code for Python scan when the C++ DLL fails to load. Although this code exists, but it will be never used, because it's very slow and it's just inefficient. Despite of the Python code being slow, it can still work and handle all value types and support various scan types. Prepare DLL scan parameters function takes Python scan parameters, such as search value, data type, UI scan type, 
and converts them into the C types and enum values that the C++ DLL functions expect for processing. It checks for all value types such as float, double, byte and more. It also checks for the scan types as well. Strings and OB scans are handled as well. Extract value from C struct has a very simple purpose. It will return a union type for a string. It is used for the scan results when called from perform first logic scan. Perform next scan logic is used to refine the scan results of the initial scan. It doesn't read the entire chunks from memory, so it's pretty fast. This function is tied to the next scan button in the UI. It goes through each previously found address, reading its current value from memory using read memory value C types function. The newly read value is then checked against the new scan parameters using compare values function. If it matches, the address is kept and its value is added to a batch called new results batch. This batch is a temporary list and the values inserted to this batch means they have changed. So when scan completes or when up to 1000 results are added to the batch, the result list in the UI is updated. The job for read memory value C types is to read a specific value from an address from another process. It reads a handle and a value type such as a 4 byte type or string type. It figures out how many bytes to read on the value type such as a 1 to 8 byte for integer and more for a string. It then uses the 132 function read process memory to copy those bytes into a temporary buffer. Finally, it converts these raw bytes back into a normal Python value, such as an integer or float or text string and returns it. This explains how the scanning feature is implemented in the Python tool and how the C++ functions are called to perform robust scans similar to Cheat Engine. The process list button at the top of the UI is tied to process window class. It will list all of the running processes and allows the user to easily pick one of the process that needs to be analyzed by the memory scanner. It allows you to attach the scanner to the process by selecting it and the scans can be done using the main window. In the init function, it sets the window title to process list and then creates the elements such as the table to display the process IDs and names and a refresh list button to scan for the processes again. An attach button along with the close button it also connects button clicks and table selections to other functions that handles those actions. In populate processes function, the process table is filled with the process names and IDs that are currently running. It uses the psutil library to get the ID and name for every active process. It then adds each process as a new row in the table. It will skip the memory scanner program itself and system idle process as we don't want to scan these. The onSelectionChanged method is triggered whenever you click on a different process in the table. It checks if a process is currently selected and if that's the case it enables the attach to process button, otherwise the button stays disabled. OnAttach is called when you click the attach to process button after selecting a process. It grabs the ID and name of the process you selected from the table. It checks if the process is still running and then sends a signal to send the ID and name of the process back to the main window and this window will close itself. Main window class contains the main UI, which contains the search input box and the button to perform the scan and show the result in a list. The init method creates all the elements. It first sets the window title to memory scanner. The visual elements are grouped in widgets. The type Q push button is used to create buttons, such as process list button. The left panel widget is created, which contains the results list. There are three columns with labels, address, value and previous. A button with an arrow icon is created which will move the row from the results table to another table at the bottom. This helps in retaining an address in the table at the bottom to avoid losing addresses when performing scans. The scan buttons are created which will help in initiating the first and next scans. A cancel button is also created to cancel a scan when needed. The single input widget is created. The user has an option to select hex values for it if needed. The double input widget is created for scanning values in a specific range. This is useful when the minimum and maximum values are known as it helps to narrow down the results more quickly. The bottom panel is created which is connected to the arrow button for copying the rows from the results table to return them for later use. At the end of the function an update timer is created to execute every one second and call update displayed values function. This will update the values in the results table. When you click the process list button, open process window is called. 
It creates the process window dialog to select a running process and attach to it. The method handle process attached is automatically called when a process is selected. It opens a handle to the target process and it will also update the label in the main window. So the user knows the tool is ready for scanning the process. When the user clicks the first scan button, it checks if we are attached to the process or not. If that's the case, it gets the scan parameters using get scan parameters function and clears all results. It creates a new scan thread object and starts the thread. This scan thread will perform the actual scanning of the target process in the background and the main window won't freeze in that way. During a scan setup progress dialog method will create a pop-up window to display the progress of the scan. It shows a progress bar along with a cancel button which allows the user to cancel the scan. The cancel current scan method checks if the scan is running and then attempts to cancel the active scan. The handle scan results batch method will receive the results in batches and add them to a temporary list for next scans. It will also apply max display results limit to avoid displaying more than 5000 scans at once. This shows how you can build your own memory scanner from scratch without getting detected by anti-cheat.